Welcome to the Health Is Your Light podcast. I'm your host, Mariah. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Cole the Wolf Da Silva. And I'm gonna let Cole interview, let himself explain who he is, what he does. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty, how he got here, because we don't just fall into success. Success is built. So Cole, can you please tell me where you are now what are you what's your title what do you do every day yeah that title thing always makes me laugh when everybody asks me like what i do and like what i actually like fall into so uh for all of you guys who do not know me my name is cole da silva the cole the wolf da silva is my nickname um i am technically if you're gonna like put a category on it a business coach for personal trainers like mariah um but i also am a gym owner i'm also a husband i'm also a soon to be father. I'm very excited about all this. Um, but there's like a lot of like backstory and it's one of the reasons why I'm excited for this podcast to like go into it. It's a little bit of like a weird description to like break it down and kind of explain because when you say business coach, you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? Which I'm sure you get all the time. Same thing with online fitness coach. People still don't get it. Um, but we run PT Domination, which is our coaching program, which Mariah is a part of. We have 1,300 students in our level one program, 100 in our level two program, and we just basically help personal trainers grow and scale their online businesses. Mm -hmm. So that's what you do, but who are you? Like, who's Cole? You're a business coach, but who would you say you are today? Um, I am a young entrepreneur who is starving for success. Like, if I was to break it down like that, I grew up in Thunder Bay, Ontario, and always wanted to help people, always wanted to kind of get out of just work in the regular bullshit rat race. And after a long amount of years of grinding, doing nothing with my life, I found fitness, um, gave me a passion for working online. So I'm 28 years old, uh, married to my beautiful wife, Julia. We've been together for actually six years now is what we celebrated, or in almost six years, fuck my life, she's gonna give me shit. Um, we have been married for two years, almost six years. That's why we went to uh, Hawaii for not only to celebrate that, but because we're going to be having a baby in November as well. Very soon. Mm -hmm. Couple months here. Yeah, it's like less than, it's 51 days. We did the yeah. math today. The due date. The yeah. Due date. It's creepy. That's it's crazy. like, it's like almost too intense. It's getting yeah. co very close. Well, it's a huge change in your life, which we're going to get into mm -hmm. today because a lot of people, and no offense to parents out there, but they will, they will say their kids are their whole life. And I'm sure things will change when you actually become a father and you'll have that love as everybody does. But we both know we, will, we both want to make more in a mark than a world than just being a parent. Oh, like you're fucking going down the rabbit hole right now. I actually was talking to Julia about this and I don't know, how, can, I, can I just fucking go hardcore yeah, on this shit? Perfect. Um, I actually was talking to Julia about this because she, she already knows. Like she's like, oh my God, as soon as we have the kid, your content's gonna be ridiculous. Because like I've said it from as far as I can remember when I like look back that I refuse, like I would rather die today straight up than become the soccer dad who just has a kid and drives the fucking kid to and from school. Like I legit, if that was my life, if I was able to look into a lens right now and just see my future and that's what it was, then I would just stop everything right now. That would be it. It terrifies the fuck out of me. There's no way I'd make my life that like that. It doesn't even make sense. I agree. But did you always feel this way? Like, did you always know you were meant for more or meant to be a dad or even always wanted kids? Um, yes. So I always did want kids. I was actually fucking terrified to, like, actually take action on it for the longest time. So I remember growing up, like, we always talk about our future. I feel like everybody does that when they're a little bit younger. Maybe not, like beginning of high school but like just getting out of high school you're like what the fuck do you want to do and i knew that i always wanted kids i knew that i always wanted to be a father um but around the fuck i want to call it like three year mark three year mark with julia like maybe four year mark with julia we almost separated and me and her talked about this a couple times because when she brought up kids again because she just turned 30 she's gonna be 31 soon um she's like listen if you do not want kids then we're done because I want kids before I'm 30. And she's like, they're like, this needs to happen. This is a milestone of mine. Like I want children in my life. And you said you wanted them in the past, but around the four year mark, it became real. It became real. And then the panic set in and the panic set in based off of the experiences I had when I was a child. I just thought I was going to be a really bit, really bad dad. And it was just like this weird spiral effect, but everything aligned how it was supposed to. 
but now you feel confident to be able to help bring a child into this world. Yeah, hundred percent. And it was, I feel like it was because I just had the realization of like, I'm not going to be I was going to be, I'm just going to be me and I'm confident in that. And I've also reached a point now where I'm so, I'm comfortable in the situation to know that the kid will never have to starve or never have to deal with money or never have to fucking panic on what's going on. Like it won't experience the same things that I experienced when I was a kid. And that was a very, very important thing to me. So I want to get into that because that's obviously made you who you are today. Mm -hmm. So why were you so scared to be a dad? Um, I think it was because like I have such a bad temper and I'm, I'm good at controlling it, but I'm also not good at controlling it. And like what I mean by that is let's take like business coaching as like a outlet or fitness coaching or even like friendships. My temper comes out in the, <laughs> in the way of direct, intense, straight to the forward feedback. Um, and it's just because I just don't have a fucking filter with anything and I need to say what's on my mind. Um, but on the flip side of it, the actual anger and violence side, it was very hard for me to control when I was younger. Um, and it wasn't even until like two years into me and Julia dating that I actually got control of it like on a deeper, deeper scale because I had started to mature as a business owner, started to mature as a fucking uh, boyfriend at the time, friends, etc. So I started to understand my emotions a little bit more. Uh, but before that, like, I would just lash out at everything and anything. Like, I wouldn't hurt people purposely or anything like that. But I was also looking for anything to set me off. And it was very hard for me to be able to control it. And not even because, like, let's say uh, we were out and somebody said something that would make me mad. It was any emotion. Like, I don't experience sadness the same way you do. I don't experience frustration, nervousness, anything like that. I experience anger. So when I get sad, I get triggered very easily. It was just very hard for me to control that. And growing up, my dad had a bad fucking temper. and My mom had a bad fucking temper. And there was a lot of intense things that happened in our household due to those tempers. So I thought I was going to become that individual. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you had to, like going ang like angry, in my opinion, mm -hmm. protects you from sadness, right? Yeah. Because if you're angry, you're going to look tougher, yeah. in my opinion, depending yeah. on what circumstance you're in. And it's almost like this subconscious protective layer that's like, don't fuck with me. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter what emotion you're feeling because I know some of your past and I assume you probably felt like you had to do that with the childhood that you had. You didn't know that someone on the street wasn't trying to hurt you verbally, physically. So I want to get into that a little bit with yeah. your childhood. Like you went through some shit and a lot of people would either use that in, in a, as an excuse to never get out of it, or they just wouldn't even realize they had that. Yeah. They'd never know their potential and they'd never achieve even half of what you did. Mm -hmm. So how do you think you, Cole, were able to get through that when everything could look like it was stacked against you? That's a very hard question to answer. Um, guys, she told me that she's gonna hit me with some shit on this one, which I'm excited for. But honestly, I feel like it was because I realized that I wasn't normal the more I started hanging out with other people. And not even like the fact that like I wasn't normal, but in the fact of like when I would sit down and I'd go to other families' Christmas dinners or like we'd do other things and I would see how the family would act towards each other. And I was like, oh, y'all are like soft as fuck compared to like, I'm like, me and my brothers were fucking ruthless, like bury each other alive, beat with a fucking frying pan type ruthless, like from just intense fights and stuff. Um, and I feel like the more I started to notice that, um, the more I also started to realize through growing up doing side jobs like Silver City, pawn shops, Walmart, like I just had a different work ethic than other individuals. I'm very emotionally disconnected to the degree of what I mean by that is I can just stop something like that and not care. Um, and like, maybe I care like very deep down, but it's so buried that I wouldn't be able to tell, like I could just stop something so I can be the best worker in the fucking room, the hardest worker in the room, do like more than anybody else. And then in a split second, be like, I'm done. Um, so I recognized that at a younger age. And then I just started to tell myself like, okay, when I was younger, um, even though it wasn't like the nicest thing, like I remember my dad telling me that his, one of his goals was that I could take a slap or take a hit, be able to look away and look back at the person without even flinching. 
And I'm like, a lot of people would go through that shit and then like utilize it as an excuse not to do anything. But I look at it as like, a, okay, yeah, that might be a little bit weird, but now I'm a fucking tough motherfucker because of it. So why am I going to complain? It's already happened. Mm -hmm. I've seen too many people on this planet waste their life and do nothing and waste their potential due to all this bullshit. Like the stuff that already happened in the past is like fucking 20 years ago. What the fuck yeah. am I gonna complain for it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And even though that's like super fucked up, like having to be able to just like turn and be like, yeah, do it again, mm -hmm. you know? I, I feel like that's like my personality yeah. too. And you saying that, I'm like, it's so, cause we, we you can use your ego in those situations. Yeah. And to me, that's like your ego being like, yeah, fucking do it again, yeah. right? But that's also how you create that resilience, like you just said, in you. And maybe if you didn't have that and you built up that tough skin emotionally, physically, you might not be in this situation. I definitely wouldn't. There's no way. Like, I, I know for a fact I would not be the person sitting here today talking to you guys, looking at you guys, doing the stuff that I'm doing in my content with coaching, anything else, if I did not have the child that I had. Like... I think about this all the time and it's something that like Julia usually looks at me like you think I do mushrooms or like fucking like smoke weed all the time because I always guilt from like zero to a hundred. I'll have like one thought and the next thing you know, the weirdest conversation sparks because I think of like 30 different scenarios in my head and I'll just dive into it. But I always look back and I'm like, if one thing changed, I wouldn't be here today. It's fucking weird. Like it, it's very weird. Like if I didn't go through the emotional trauma that I went through, I would have never started the side jobs and left my house when I actually left my house. I would have never met the fucking best friend back home. Would have never fucking got told that we should go on a road trip to Calgary. Would have never fucking stayed there. Like, it's just a weird trickle effect where I'm like, yeah, it's fucked up at the time, but everything aligned properly. And I didn't utilize everything that aligned as life is trying to fuck me. It was more of like, oh, that just happened. Mm -hmm. Let's just move forward anyways. And it just helped me fucking spiral to where I am today. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that because I think people shy away from the, making those decisions, but each decision you made is what changed your life. Awesome. Like insane, going from Thunder Bay, Ontario, to now you live in Kelowna, BC. Pretty fucking different city, yeah. Oh, yeah. pretty different life, but it didn't just happen where you moved from Thunder Bay to Kelowna. There was so many other decisions mm -hmm. in between where you had to take a leap of faith. You didn't know it was on the other side. So that first one was that road trip that you went on with your friends yeah. to Calgary, right? right? Yeah. So can you explain what happened in Calgary? Yeah, um, so for everybody who doesn't know, because obviously Mariah knows a lot about my story, we were in Thunder Bay and back in the day, like me and my boys would just party all the fucking time. I'm talking about like we loved alcohol so much. Have you ever heard of the game icing? Yes. Right? So y'all play it fucking weird though. How okay. do you how do you play it out here? You hide the ice somewhere. And then somebody and finds it. Finds it and then okay, yeah, y'all play it like fucking real people in the east. Okay, yeah. two shit. Calgary, they just give it to them. Well, I'm from the island and we're BC, so yeah. Weird. yeah, you guys play it correctly. If you're in Calgary, that's not how you fucking ice someone. People are just buying it and shit. So no. we used to love alcohol so much that we would like buy like a two four and hide them around the house. And then if the person didn't get home quick enough, we'd get bored and then start drinking them and then fucking remake them with vodka and juice and shit. Like we were huge partiers. So I think it was my boy James, uh, back home James Van Roon, one of my homies like OGs who like saved me back in the day, like helped me fucking get out of my regular life. Um, he said that we should go on a road trip because he knew one of his friends out here. I think his name was John. Um, it was a fucking beauty guy in Calgary as well. He's like, yo, let's go on a road trip. Let's go to fucking Calgary. It'll be an absolute blast. I don't remember like how the conversation went. All I remember is us being like, bet, let's go. Sounds good. Um, too. Oh, yeah. You guys don't know if you're like living in the US. It's like a 24 hour drive. Way up on the other side of mm -hmm. Canada to Calgary. It's like, it's not just a close. Trip. It's like, well, okay, I say 24 hours. It's supposed to be like a 29 or a 30 hour drive. We can do it in 24 hours. We've yeah. done it before. We did it in 37 because during the road trip, um, have you ever heard of geocaching? Yes. So we did that shit the whole time. And again, okay, not condoning it. Don't fucking scold me for my actions. We were fucking hammered. Like I'm talking about blasted. The driver was only allowed one drink. Everybody else though, just get fucking lit up. We were picking up hitchhikers, getting them drunk off their ass, geocaching the whole way. Um, I was working at Walmart at the time too, and I was a fucking delinquent back then. So even though, again, I was the hardest worker, 
I could flish off my emotions. I just didn't even tell them. Just left for a fucking two weeks. Just did my thing. Long story short, we get to Calgary and we're partying the whole time, having a blast, going through like every bar that we can find, just drinking like crazy, just absolute psychopaths. I'm talking about like butt naked, fucking skinny dipping in the fountains downtown Calgary, like crazy shit. Um, and then I remember I went to see my brother. So I've actually got a half brother and half sister out here. So it was split. It was my parents and my two younger brothers in Thunder Bay. And then it was my half brother, Chris Ajarni, and then my half, my half sister, Rochelle Lalonde. Uh, they both have different dads than my father. Um, they both lived in Calgary. They lived in Calgary for like ever since we lived back in Calgary when I was a kid. So we were like all over the place. Um, I hung out with him for a day and he's like, why the fuck are you going back to Thunder Bay? He's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, why the fuck would you? There's no point. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, why the fuck would you go back to Thunder Bay? He's like, there's literally nothing there. He's like, there's no jobs. You've been there your whole life. You're doing nothing. You're just drinking and working at Walmart. He's like, I can get you a job today, making more money than you've ever made there. And I was like, bet, do it. I'm like, fine. He literally called up some guy named Kevin McCafferty. If you do ever end up watching this, fuck you, you Scottish guy. And like me and him used to get, he's my favorite boss of all time. He's hilarious. Uh, but called him up out of nowhere with some random number I've never even heard before. And I had a laborer job by the end of the day. My interview was, I met him. He's like, can you pick up that beam? I picked up the beam. He's like, dope, you're hired as a laborer. Sounds good, $18 an hour. Yeah, you just didn't go back. No, that was it. I literally told my friends, I'm like, after I did the interview, this was like a three-day process, by the way. Um, we were supposed to drive it on, like, let's say it was Saturday, because I don't remember the day. Um, I did the interview on fucking Thursday, told them on Friday. I'm like, I'm not coming back with you. They're like, what the fuck do you mean? And I was like, I'm never coming home. And they were like, what do you mean you're not coming home? I was like, I'm moving. I'm coming. I'm changing. Just deciding to change my life. And it was legit, like nothing crazy, traumatizing happened, nothing insane. I just got the opportunity. So I went like that. I took a plane. I took a bus back, Greyhound back, like a week and a half later after hanging out with my brother and sister, got all my stuff. And then I flew back to Calgary and that was it. Never back. I'm like, I think I did maybe three or four trips as like a friend but never fucking moved back and I haven't been back to Thunder Bay fuck since I like brought Julia there years ago mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think some people would think that's impulsive but I also think sometimes you need to just not think and just go because you could have easily been like yeah you're right like I'll just come back with you all my friends are there my family's there that's what I know yeah. you lived in Calgary when you were what like tiny, tiny. Tiny, you probably don't even remember, right? So upping and leaving your whole life behind, you have no idea, you're like, sure, I'll go. Was it an ironworking job your first one in Calgary? Yeah, I I became a laborer for all the other ironworkers there. Yeah, so you're like, I'm gonna do this job, haven't done before, Mm -hmm. and just left. But that's sometimes the jump you need to make in order to get, you might have not even thinking, I'm trying to get to the next level, you're just like. Oh yeah, there was no next level at all. It was. There, there was a little bit of wanting to change because I like, even though again it was fun and it was like a lot of drinking. Even back then, um, I just knew my life was going nowhere. Mm-hmm. I'm like I let, like there was some subconscious thought because I was definitely was not as aware mentally and emotionally as I am now. Like not even fucking close. If I'm not mistaken, I think I was 20 when I made this move. I don't remember the timeline. I always try to figure it out, but it's very hard because I deleted a lot of the photos and stuff from back then because I didn't like the fucking shit that was online. Um, But yeah, there was just, I just had the fucking impulse to do it and I just took fucking action because I didn't want to work at Walmart anymore. I didn't want to fucking drink. I didn't want to just party every day consistently no matter what. And obviously I didn't know what was going to happen in an even more negative way when I came here, but it was like my way of like half escaping and also my way of like, okay, well, what's next? Because nothing's fucking happening anyways. I feel like a lot of people, like they might say it's impulsive, but then my response to them would be like, well, what the fuck have you ever done with your life? Like there's people who are still doing the same job in the same town they've been in for 45 fucking years. And I'm like, but they watch everyone on TV and want the other life, but they won't take one impulse decision ever. Yeah, that scares the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. It scares me way more being in the same place, doing the same shit over and over. Again, just having kids, getting them, go put them through school and yeah. whatnot. And yeah, and then you, like you just said, you're watching other people live their lives. Like, yeah. that's the scariest thing to me. It's I freaky. never want to, to do that. It freaks me the fuck out. Yeah. Like, this, when I look at that, when I, like, look back at my past, I feel like there's, there's, 
I, I had a, a superpower and that was just the fact that I fucking didn't, I wasn't close to anybody. Like even my family, a lot of, I feel like a lot of people look at that as like a sad story and I'm like, I don't. Because if I was very close to my family, it might have made that decision harder. If I was very close to a lot of people, it might have made the decision harder. But at the same time, I'm like, I just went with my gut. And I feel like it's helped me across everything I've ever done. Yeah, that's true. Like finding the, the pain from or making the growth out of pain. Yeah. Right. Um, and people look at pain sometimes. Like you said, I'm, oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck in this pain and just like <laughs> sit in it. And it's mm -hmm. like, well either stay in your pain or get out of it. Like yes. so many people just sit in it and they'd rather complain about their pain because it's more comfortable to sit in your pain than it is to actually make a change and get out of it. I also think it's because pain is relatable. And this yeah. is something that a lot of individuals don't understand. If you're watching this right now as well or listening to this anywhere, I just want you to pay attention to this for a minute because I feel like this is a disconnect that a lot of you have. Pain is relatable in the way of, let's say you are going through something hard um, and you're one of the individuals, you're not, but you're one of the individuals who just like to complain about it and you want to bitch about it and not do anything about it. Other people can relate to that because they're doing the same fucking thing. So they're going to pat you on the back. They're going to give you that fucking little bit of encouragement that they know you might need. And it's just going to be this hamster wheel effect where not doing that chasing success being against the fucking norm cutting out the bullshit taking action anyways is not normal it's not relatable so when you do try to do that your mom or your fucking brothers and sisters and all the people who complain all the fucking time give you shit and try to throw you off your path and try to stop you from doing it i literally just did a live in my client community yesterday on this for our mindset yeah and it was about who you surround yourself with because mm -hmm. i was super inspired we had an event this weekend that the guys hosted for yeah. a business event. And so I was inspired because we were surrounded by high level individuals and friends that I don't have here like that, right? That yeah. um, inspire you to level up. So I'm talking to my fitness clients about that. Like, I want you guys to ask yourself, and I know when I say this, you're gonna think of minimum one, oh, yeah. probably three or more people yeah. that are in your life right now that are bringing you down, not building you up. And there's people in my community that I know for sure. I, I talk to them and they're like, this person doesn't support me. This person doesn't support my weight loss journey. Sorry, but I don't have sympathy for that. I used to, I used to be like, oh man, yeah, that really sucks. No, cut them the fuck out of your life. Like life is too short to have those people around you. And I just do not understand. I do understand people are in pain. They don't understand that there's relationships out there in the world whether it be romantic or just friendship mm -hmm. or family that you choose to be your family, yeah. that can be 10 times better than what they have, but they've never had that before. So they're like, how can I imagine that when this is all I've ever known? And that's it. I did a video on this in the past. Um, I'm actually gonna be reposting it again soon because I feel like people need to hear it. But the statement is I'd rather be alone than lonely, mm -hmm. or I'd rather be alone than hurt. And the reason why I said that is because I feel like a lot of people out there latch on to the toxic like energy vampires that they have. Their negative mom, their negative sister, their negative best friend from high school has done nothing with their life. All these negative motherfuckers because they're too terrified of being alone. And it's because you guys have no idea who the fuck you are. They have no idea what they like. They don't know what their hobbies are. They don't understand what they actually enjoy. Their food that they actually eat isn't even the stuff that they enjoy because they're never actually worried about their own opinions. It's just become this fucking hamster wheel of life. And anybody who's moved out of the norm is considered a fucking weirdo or a scam artist or an asshole or arrogant or whatever other word the masses want to utilize to describe them. Yeah, like why is it normal for a grocery clerk to see all your chips, your pop, your cookies on on the little conveyor belt. But when I go let load up my six carton of eggs, my egg whites, my chicken, my broccoli shit that's like looks really clean, it's like, oh wow, like there's no there's no junk at all here, hey? It's like if you said that about someone's food that had just a shit ton of bad packaged food calories, mm -hmm. they would be so offended. They would lose their fucking minds. But like like, can, we, can I take this up a notch? Yes. Like, this is even, like, on the other way. Guys, I'm very raw, by the way. This is why I fucking asked Mariah, like, how far I can take this shit. Like, let's even go out on the other way. I don't understand how, in today's day and age, 
with drinking and then let's take obesity for a minute. I'm going to talk about both for a second. Let's take drinking. I used to be addicted to Percocets. I used to be addicted to drugs. I used to drink literally alcohol like a fucking fish. This is not a joke. I'm talking about I could pound a 40 of rum. Good. You won't even know I'm hammered. I might be black the fuck out, but you won't even know because I could car carry a conversation like this, but no one would ever say anything. And then as soon as I decided to cut everything out, as soon as I decided to go towards sobriety, everyone, oh, why aren't you drinking anymore? Like what happened? Why are you drinking? That's weird. What the fuck do you mean that's weird? That doesn't even make sense. Like again, stuff that is healthy, stuff that is looked at as progression leveling up is always taken in a bad light. And then let's look at the obesity. Obesity has never been higher right now. It's killing more people than fucking any of the other shit that we've been dealing with for two years. It's ridiculous. But then as soon as you try to be healthy, trends pop up on TikTok. I don't know if you saw my video the other day, uh, but this new one that apparently if you count your macros and count your food, you're considered to have an eating disorder. Oh, I've heard that so many times. What the fuck does that even mean? People are preaching that now. And it's like, how is learning what is in food and learning how food makes your body feel an eating disorder. Yeah. If you can count your macros and eat 5,000 calories, like what do you mean? How is, not, how is overeating not an eating disorder? Yo. It is, but no one will say it because it's attached to this beauty at size of, yeah, positive. all sizes. Yeah. No, like let's call it what it is. You're not healthy if you can't get up off the ground. Yeah. You're not healthy if your body is impaired. You're not healthy if your bones ache. Yes, people are on the path to becoming more healthy. That's important. But let's not let's not call it what it is. It's it's ridiculous. It drives me fucking mental. I'm like, I don't do again, I'm a business coach now. I don't do a lot of fitness content. I heard that. I couldn't even hold it in. I called Braden. I'm like, get the fuck down here. Right now we're filming some videos about fitness because it's just gotten too much. Like people need to start getting called out on their shit because like this whole let's blame the world for how I feel and not take accountability for my fucking actions, latch on to negativity is just getting way too intense. Yeah. And that doesn't have to be just fitness like that's that's everything in yes. life right that's just something that you can visually see you can visually see when somebody isn't taking action or accountability yes. for their health right you can't see if somebody isn't taking action for their mental health sometimes mm -hmm. you can if they're they don't look well right but you can't see if somebody's not taking action to make more money in your life you can't see a lot of those things but you can see see that and we're just trying to say that yeah. it's like health is fucking visual yeah. Yeah. very visual whether you want to believe it or not it's very easy to see if you're neglecting your health even to the degree of neglecting your micros and not taking care of your internal fucking health because let's be real you start to fuck up your body and your kidneys start to fail you're going to turn yellow okay like let's in every aspect of the word health is visual across the fucking board mm -hmm. everybody sees that shit and what doesn't make sense to me is that literally taking action on your health not only helps you feel better, it impacts everybody around you. Even if you have to go through those times of judgment where your, where your friends, your family are saying, why are you eating that? Yeah. Why are you eating more? You look fine. Even though you have to go through those situations, if you keep pushing through, people are gonna notice your mood change. Yeah. They're gonna notice your energy. They're gonna notice how you are around them. And they might not tell you that you're impacting them, but they will start automatically, subconsciously making decisions. So they start to feel better and feel healthy. And then it just trickles and it goes, no. People won't do that, take it back. Again, it's, it's, it's yeah. those individuals, even, that they, even though they wanna change, all right, they won't stand up for themselves. I literally just did a podcast on this. They won't stand up for themselves and step into their own power. So they just exist in the life that they fucking hate, even though they want to get out of it due to the opinions of, again, their mom or their fucking brothers or their friends from high school, individuals that don't even fucking know them, like Facebook friends. Like people will have someone give an opinion on Facebook and I'm like, you know, you can unfriend them, right? They're like, well, this is actually like my sister's brother's third girlfriend from high school that from 25 years ago that I really knew. Like, have you said one fucking thing other than happy birthday in the last five years? They're like, no. Yeah. Like then unfriend them. What the fuck are we doing? I 
I know. Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, again, I know like per there's people that just like to please others, but I've never been able to, even though I have a great relationship with my brothers, my mom, my dad, I did whatever I wanted. Yes. Like I didn't care if they didn't approve of it. I wasn't a bad kid or anything, but like I didn't, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this, whatever. Like when I dropped out of university, I was like, cool. Like I care that you care about me, but like I'm, I'm not going to just stay in university because yeah. you want me to. And a lot of people are stuck in that. They will not make decisions for themselves mm -hmm. if they think someone else doesn't want them to make that decision. That's how you're always going to stay stuck. That's how you're always going to stay in the dark. My podcast is called Health is Your Light for a reason. Mm -hmm. If you continue to stay stuck in your health, you're going to stay stuck in the dark. You're never going to be able to step out into your light and become the person that you're supposed to impact the people that you're supposed to. I think we're all here to impact in different ways. Doesn't mean you need to have a huge voice on social media. Doesn't mean you need to make millions of dollars, mm -hmm. but I think we're all here to do something yeah. and have an impact in some way. And I know for you, you've spoke about this a couple times and I really liked the analogy that you used. It was last event or maybe the event before, maybe it was the first event last September. And you said, I was always in the shadows of my best friend. Mm -hmm. So not in the dark, but a little bit. You didn't truly step into your full light. In my opinion, I've known you for about two year, almost two years, Academy yeah. 2020 or this, this December. Oh, so I was actually able to meet you before you even stepped into my opinion your true light and power because you weren't doing your motivational posts yet mm -hmm. so i want you to explain a little bit about how you were in the shadows and how you were able to fully step into your light not go in front of your best friend and try and outshine him pivot and shine where you're supposed to shine mm, deep one shit. um so Guys, when it comes down to what me and Brian do, all right, my boy, my brother, my business partner, Brian Mark, we run PT Domination together. So uh, when it came to us coming up, I was actually his fitness client, all right, became his fitness client, was there, was his fitness client for, I think, around almost a year until I became an actual trainer on his team, became a trainer on his team, started to scale past all the other individuals that he had with him very quickly. Um, we started to work together very fucking closely. And then I think we built a set of nation for another two years, if I'm not mistaken, trying to figure out the timeline. And then before you go into that, I first want you to explain a little bit how you got actually into health from your yeah. Percocet addiction. Cause I'd say that was your first stepping into your own life, right? All right. So we'll go to that first. So um, before I became before I became an iron worker, I was struggling with like just doing drugs and drinking. Um, and then when I was telling you guys I was trying to escape from Thunder Bay, I wanted to escape to a certain degree from Thunder Bay because I didn't want to be, for lack of a better term, a loser anymore. But again, it wasn't like as spiritual slash as like enlightened as I break it down now. It was just like, I don't want to fucking be here. I'm fucking leaving. I now have a job. It's way more fucking lucrative than I, what I have now. Let's do it. Well, when I got to Calgary, became an iron worker, was a laborer for a little bit. Um, and again, I really did nothing. I would go to work. I would smoke some weed at work because one of my homies at work always had fucking weed. And then we'd get off work, we'd go straight to the bar and we'd drink at the sports bar until like fucking 10 every night. It was the only friends that I had was my coworkers. We'd drink and drink and drink and drink and drink. Um, after around a year though of iron working, um, my hands started to cramp up like really fucking bad. And I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the rattling. Everybody tells me that's what it was from the rattling of like the beams and swinging sledgehammers against pure steel. I don't know if you guys have ever done that before. If you want an example of what I'm saying, go take a hammer, just your regular fucking metal carpenter hammer that your dad's got in the garage or that you have as well, and go swing that motherfucker against the metal. I was just going to say that as soon as you said that because I've done it before. Yeah. Or even like you almost like hit a ham, like a nail, like it. Oh yeah, it rattles your fucking hand through your yeah. thing. Now, I had 20 pound sledgehammers that I'm swinging against pure steel that's like this fucking thick. And our goal, if that happened, was to move the fucking beam over even a slight inch to get it twisted properly. On top of that, we have impact. So you're on a huge three quarter inch fucking steel bolt through three quarter inch two pieces of steel and you're bolting them together. So it's just rattling like crazy. My hands started to cramp up so bad I was waking up like this. 
and I couldn't fucking move my forearms. And it was to the degree where I was in like excruciating fucking pain. I lived with my sister at the time and she would legit have to like help me like fucking work my forearms in the morning and like fucking move my hand so I could go to work. I'm fucking 23 so year I've old. I've actually experienced some of that before. Right? So um, for those of you that don't know, I was a tree planter. I did forestry work in the Okanagan. So you'd have your shovel in this hand, right? Yeah. A little metal shovel, a little metal thing on the end. And not to near to the degree as you, but I'd be planting 3,000 trees a day. That's fine. So you're swinging your shovel, yeah. double, triple that, right? Because every time you go put in, you're not going to put a tree in, right? Yeah. So you'd sometimes be up in these hills hitting rocks all day. Yeah. Same thing. By the Towards the end of the season, you're having to open yeah, up your hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like tree planters, yeah, all deal with that. And I couldn't even, even imagine like you do seasonal work. So it's like top three months of work. So you can just straight. Yeah, this is like, this oh yeah, is all summer, yeah. straight into fucking winter. All right. Like different buildings, different fucking jobs as well. And we didn't do structural iron working. So I didn't just come and stand the steel and then leave. I stood all the steel and then we cladded it. So then I would put the fucking siding all the way across it. Then I would roof it. And then I'd fucking roof. Actually, we did roofing first, then cladding to make sure that the structure was good. So we do steel beaming, cranking all these fucking bolts in. Then we have all these massive sheets come in, like four or five thousand pounds a, sh a bundle of sheets. You put them down. You gotta like pull them out, and it's like individual pieces. It was fucking crazy. Like it was grunt, hard fucking work all day long, fucking continual, twelve hours straight. Um, and again, I started to wake up and I couldn't move my fucking hands and my sister would help me and I started fucking like trying to rub them out, get massages, different things like that. Nothing was working. Advil, ibuprofen, none of it like that. Well, again, I'm a heavyweight. When I was younger and I would drink like crazy, I could fucking drink an entire 40 or if I did drugs, like let's talk about MDMA for a second. I wouldn't just do a fucking gram. I'd pop like four. Like I'm, I've always taken it to the extreme so my body could handle a lot. Um, so nothing was helping with the pain. I remember going to the doctors and I'm like, I need fucking help. I'm like, I'm 23 years old and I cannot open my fucking hands and I'm working as a, like a savage trying to do stuff. I cannot be waking up like this. It's taking me until noon to be able to fucking feel my fucking fingers properly and to be able to move and hold these fucking sheets. I'm like, this is slowing down the work. And again, they don't give a fuck. They're like, do it. Eat, do it smarter like be a smarter guy motherfucker i'm a laborer this is how i make my work this is how i make my fucking living so after asking seeing a couple doctors and going in and not getting any help i was like fuck it again i'm resourceful i'll figure it out so one of my buddies had percocets at the time i took one it helped i just started to take it as like uh this will help me this will help me this will help me and then it turned into a oh i like the feeling of being numb all right, completely numb of all emotions and just grinding away. So then I was eating anywhere from four to seven a day consistently, no matter what, carrying, walking around with a hundred in my pocket. It was a fucking lot. It was crazy. Honestly, like when I look back at it now and like seeing everything that fucking happened, um, like I was driving like fucking huge boom lifts, fucking huge forklifts, flying steel up 50, 60 feet in the fucking air with the boom lift and shit like that, just high off my fucking ass. There's one memory I'll never forget because I was working in a wife beater and it was, I don't fucking know, like five degrees out, raining. It was like coming towards winter and it's fucking cold. Yeah. And me and my coworkers were just out there because we're all fucking taking them. We're all fucking high as shit. Uh, it was me and two other individuals just out there and I was just grinding away in the cold, fucking steaming, like just going like crazy. And I remember my other coworker came up and he's like, you need to fucking put a jacket on or something because everybody's looking at you like you're a fucking psychopath. Yeah. Like, like this is not normal. They're like looking at you and you're just steaming, just zombied out, just going, going and going and getting work done. Um, and I did that for, I swear it was over a year. Um, but again, I cannot remember the timeline at all. It's just fucking well, blur. Numb yeah, the whole, time. the whole fucking How time. Stress, right? It was just... fucked. Like, just I remember if we went out, it was two, three Percocets, and then in like fucking a ridiculous amount of alcohol, I just started functioning like that. And it like got so bad where if I didn't have my perks and I couldn't get more, I would just eat anything. Like down 12 extra strength or back set in one go just to get some sort of fucking hit like that, drinking straight Cody and shit like that. Um, and it lasts like that for a very, very long time until uh, we went to, there was a, one job that we did before Sparwood BC. And I don't remember what the fucking job was, but we went to Sparwood BC. 
And I was already running out of Percocets near that time. I didn't know where to get them. The street price went up a lot. I already had a fucking bunch of debt. Uh, well, for me, it was like 15 grand. And then I had racked up like two credit cards fully. I was getting paid like four or $5,000 a month and it was just gone instantly. So I'm like, I couldn't keep up with the street price. So I slowly started to like wean them off. And then I just woke up one day and I was like, I don't fucking want to do this anymore. He's like, I, I was like, I feel like shit. I'm like, I have no one in my life. I'm like, nobody I can fucking rely on. Nobody that I, I actually consider a fucking friend or anything. So I just stopped. And fucking dumped all the other ones that I had down the drain and fucking started on my fitness journey. And I started doing like uh, little fitness apps and yeah. tracking my food as good as I could on my own. And this is before I met Brian. Um, I actually hired a guy named my, um, Joseph Rackage Fitness. I don't know if you know that guy is. Huge UK dude. He's like one of the powerhouses in the industry still. But he's got, he had like this fitness app. That's what I hired. I was, like, I was like tracking my stuff and trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. And we went to Sparwood BC. And when I was in Sparwood BC, that's when actually when Brian and me got linked up on a phone call. Oh, sweet. Uh, because my coworker, who actually, um, uh, one of my coworkers, I right, fuck it. My coworker who actually got me fucking into Percocets was actually the individual who was dating, all right, the brother who was one of, or he was dating this girl who was brothers with the person who was Brian's client. Oh, okay. And that's how the fucking connection got made. And so I ended up getting on the phone, and Brian was like, "Yo, so uh, I'm not gonna lie. He's like, what, what's going on? I told him about my fitness goals, and then um, he's like, so." I heard you got like a little bit of like drinking and like drug problems. Like what's going on? I was like, well, I cut out the perks, but like I love drinking. And I just told him kind of the story. And he's like, okay, dope. He's like, I want to help you. He's like, you're going to do a fitness competition. I'm like, no, I'm not. He's like, yes, you are. I'm like, no, I'm not. He's like, yes, you are. He's like, I'm not helping you unless you do it. I'm like, fuck you. Um, and to this day, I'm like, you only did it because you wanted to charge me with money, you motherfucker. Yeah. It was like 350 bucks a month or something. Yeah, that's pretty insane too. If you're just trying to be like a lifestyle client and you're like, you're going to do a fitness competition, bro. Yeah, you can't drink. Straight forced. Yeah, yeah, straight into it. So he's like, you're doing it. I was like, fine, let's fucking go. And he's like, oh, and by the way, because I just paid him 350 bucks, he's like, um, I know that you fucking struggle with this shit. So he's like, if I catch you drinking or doing any drugs while you're in my program, he's like, I'm going to kick you out and keep all your money. Oh, and I was man. like, okay, fucking mm -hmm. sounds good. So it went from like, honestly, in the span of like six months, it was I kicked Percocet's cold turkey, started on my fucking fitness journey, was like hitting the gym pretty consistently because I've always been an all in or nothing guy. So even before I met B, like we're in Sparwood, BC, and I've got like groceries in my little Airbnb hotel and fucking driving to the gym when everybody else is just chilling. Like I'm very, very all in or nothing. Um, but within the span of six months, went from fucking lost to just having a coach who was going to push me towards my goals. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's like one way you were able to and then get into your next level yeah. from actually focusing on your health. Because what happened when you won one of your fitness competitions? Honestly, it was fucking crazy. So he obviously put me on the path. We grinded for six months straight. While I was doing that grind, it was 10 to 12 hours a day of work, two hours of boxing a day because I was boxing at the same time, an hour and a half workout posing, and then just grinding so I was sleeping like four hours a night. Won my first fitness competition. The first fitness competition, I actually was seeing Julia at the time. Uh, she came down to like support me and uh, she always gives me shit for this because I didn't really invite her. My sister invited her. She's like, you should come. She's like, came with me. So it was like a little bit of like a drive up to fucking Edmonton um, or Red Deer is where it was from Calgary and then drove up with her and then I won. Um, and then afterwards, Julia was like, all right, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, are we dating? Like, yeah. what the fuck's going on? So we actually ended up dating and that's why I'm like, it'll always be etched in my mind. November 5th, 2016 is not only the date that it, the day that I started dating Julia, but it was the day that I won my first fitness competition. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. It's fucking super cool. It was yeah. like an enlightening experience to just like see everything that fucking changed in like such a drastic amount of time like that. The amount that you need to change mentally in order to get on stage is like next level. Oh yeah. Like if you ever want to see what you're made of, sign up for a fitness competition. Oh yeah, like it's no it's no fucking joke. People people underestimate how hard the hard it is all the fucking time, but it was just it was just a, again something switched. I feel like it was because of my addicted like my addictive personality and the fact that I dealt with drugs in the past where I'm like shit just became easy. Mm -hmm. I'm like grinding for the f first fitness competition. People think that I didn't work. 
like I was driving boom lifts instead of doing drugs while doing it. Now I had like the elbows driving 60 feet in the fucking air with this, eating chicken and fucking broccoli with mustard out of a fucking container. I have videos on Instagram if I scroll deep back, like if I can get all the way to 2016 in the archive still, um, of me like in the work truck eating broccoli, chicken, rice, and mustard, plain. That's what I ate for six months straight. While motherfuckers are eating Little Caesars pizza and shit. And I'm getting them their pizzas and stuff. And I'm just going like this. Like, it will show you who the fuck you are. And it helped me, like, it helped take me from a very dark place to, like, literally 180-ing my fucking life. Because it was just, it just forced me out of everything that fucking ever held me back from across the board. And sometimes the all or nothing mindset can be bad. And sometimes the all or nothing mindset is what can completely change your life, like you just said. Using your addictive personality for a positive and a benefit for your life. Mm -hmm. And you were able to step out of that. And then eventually, because you won your show, you kind of had this deal going on with Brian. That was actually a funny fucking thing. I backed him into a corner hard. So like I classic fucking competitor won my show. I'm like, I want to be a fitness coach now. Like this is fucking lit. I want to coach people. And he's like, calm the fuck down, bud. He's like, there's another show in six months. It was actually the same federation. So it's FMC. They were trying to get their feet off the ground. They're big in Europe, but they were trying to come here. I uh, did the first one, won that one first in overalls. I think there was like 15 guys across the board. Um, because in multiple classes, it was like different things. And then one then there was six months later brian's like if you win that one then i'll make you a trainer on my team he's like oh also you need to get certified so i did everything i just told you guys about for my first show and i also was getting my certification at the time through issa i became a, a sports nutrition coach and a certified personal trainer and i also during that time became a group trainer because towards that six months for my second competition not only did i grind as an iron worker and get certified as a CPT, certified in sports nutrition, but I quit my ironworking job, flew up north and became an in-person personal trainer through group coaching um, as a fucking, fucking north jockey. Sweet. It was fucking crazy. And then won my second show first in overalls and back Brian into a corner and he had to give me a job. Now, I want to touch on that though, because even though all my clients, if you're listening right now, get your eight hours of sleep every night, <laughs> <laughs> that shit's important. Yes. You did what you had to do and you sacrificed in your life in order to have a better life. And a lot of people will make excuses or aren't willing to do that. And it drives me crazy oh, yeah. because when I hear the time excuse, I'm like, there is so much fucking time in the day to do your shit. You don't have to work out an hour every single day, seven days a week. Fit it into your schedule. You have to eat food anyways eat good food, yes. make that switch. <laughs> you need to drink water to yes. stay alive. Drink water, like what do you mean? You're working, you can have a, wa a bottle right beside you. Yep. And with you, like even Brian will say this, like you didn't complain. You got your certification, you were doing your iron working job, you were hustling in a, in a competition. And again, for people that don't know, you need, you are depleted, you have zero energy. Zero energy from food, you're losing weight, and you're not getting sleep. You're yeah. sleeping like four hours. Yeah. And Brian always says this. It's like he didn't complain. He always had his check-in first. He was not missing, and he didn't complain because you knew that that's what you needed to do in order to get out of the life that you were at. And sometimes I do not understand how people can't see that. You need to change in order to change your life. Yeah, it, it, it honestly doesn't compete with me. And I feel like, again, like bringing it all the way back to the beginning, even though I went through a lot of real fucked up shit as a kid, one of the things that got pushed into me was that if, like, if you're going to take action on something, just do it. Don't make excuses because what the fuck is the point in starting in the first place? Um, and that was more of my dad, just like having that relentless, savage fucking mindset. Like I remember my dad fell off the roof once when, he was, when I was younger, broke his motherfucking foot, and then finished the fucking job anyways. Like... My dad had the same do story. the yeah crazy. do the fucking work um and I, I like at the same time as well i just didn't have anybody to complain to like i was fucking tired i was exhausted but i'm like what the fuck is the point in complaining i chose to do that shit who am i gonna bitch to like oh my god this competition's so fucking hard people would be like then why are you doing it well let's take even competition out of it like 
oh my god it's so hard to track my macros oh my god it's so hard to work out three times a week well do you do you want to stay in 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 the body you have right now choose your fucking heart is it hard to go to the gym or is it hard to bend over entire shoes because you don't know how to lose your fucking gut like that's the fucking truth of it these people don't want to take action because of the surface level thought of how hard it is Mm -hmm. i just i've never had that fucking mindset i'm just like when i want to do something like that all in like all in or nothing where you're like sometimes it's healthy sometimes it's not that's literally my whole life Mm -hmm. i'm either 100 percent all in or i'm either 100 percent all out and i will not do it and i've just done that in everything through business coaching through us doing our events through me doing fitness competitions through me fucking being with julia it is either 100% all in or 100% all out and no fucking other way around it, period. And that's why you're successful. That's where, why you are here right now. And so you were able to step into that next level, became a coach with Brian, Aesthetic Nation. Yeah. Long story short, Aesthetic Nation folded. You yes. guys created PT Dom out of thin air, out of nothing. You guys worked super hard, brought that up. And you guys became super, super successful relatively quick, quickly with that. No short amount of work, of course, mm-hmm. but very quickly. But um, going back to how this conversation started, yeah. you still weren't in your own light. Well, it was actually one sentence that changed everything. So um, I've always been in the back end. So like again, when we had dissolved this designation, I was working on the back end. And like Brian said it at the event, so you heard it a little bit, but we don't go like too far in depth all the time. I was doing like two, maybe three live streams back then in PD Domination, and I was running all of AEN and Amarok Coaching. We dissolved AEN, then Brian asked me to dissolve Amarok Coaching, so then I was doing a lot more. I was doing the live streams, I was doing the back end work, I was making sure the website was working, but Brian was already the face. Like he was established as PT Domination because we'd already been doing that for like a year. So he had already been up here, but you come in the face of everything. Um, His Instagram, everything yeah. was pushed. Yeah. And mine was still fitness coaching because that's what I was doing. So when he asked me to dissolve Amaral coaching and step into PT domination, the reason why like it's, it's a very pivotal story in what we do is because it was literally me dissolving everything that made me me again mm-hmm. and just legit stepping back into the shadow. Because when I came into Aesthetic Nation, it was be everything. And then it was like, as soon as this AEN was gone, because even like with Brian not running it, it was still his. It was me stepping into my own light with my own business, operating my own clients, making fucking 15K, and then stepping back into the shadows again. Well, when we got out of it, it was a long time coming. I don't remember the exact date. I can actually figure it out for you because it was a Zoom call that we did with Tacky and his team. Mm -hmm. Tacky Moore, if you guys don't know, was Brian's first ever mentor. He was the individual that helped us scale PT Domination. Um, I don't want to say to where it is now, but in a big way. Well, one of the calls, her name was Janika. I don't remember what her last name was, but we're on the call. We're in this like group session and me and Brian are both there. It's like one of the only calls I've ever done with Tacky because Tacky was Brian's mentor. Brian hired him. He had, they had a good relationship. They asked us questions and we started to explain and we started to explain and we're talking about like, how can we both run the business? How can we both grow it? How can we both scale? Because at this point, Brian was already doing so much with PT Domination on like the uh, on the uh, like front end marketing wise, bringing people in acquisition wise, and I was doing so much of the delivery. But in order to scale more, our first initial thought was we both need to be on acquisition. We both need to be putting out content, pulling in leads, all this other stuff. So we're asking questions, and she's like, "Shut the fuck up! Shut up!" So you guys are being bitches, man. Just embrace your spotlight on diff- embrace your spotlight on different stages and step into your fucking power. And legit, when this girl said this, I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "We just got called out so hard." And at that point, that was where we took like a massive pivot with PT domination, and we stopped trying to pull leads from my account or stopped trying to create anything. That was actually right around the fucking time I almost quit Instagram, one hundred percent. Last it was like last February. Um, and that's when I started putting out fucking motivation content because we stopped trying to just put business on my page, trying to turn me from fitness coach to business coach. Um, and I just started becoming the motivational guy because on the front end, like it doesn't look like it's, it's like that much, but that was fucking stressful as shit to me because 
like Brian had already been established for a year and a half. And then people were just expecting me to be the same in a month. Like, well, your account isn't fucking pulling this much. Like, we need to be doing this. We need to be doing this. Everyone just wanted me to be Brian. When I say everyone, I'm like, guys, we have a fucking big team. We had a lot of clients even then. Yeah. Like, everyone just expected me to be another Brian. But I'm like, motherfuckers, I didn't come into this to be another B. So when that girl said that to us, it made a big shift in our business because I stopped trying to be Brian. I stopped trying to listen to what everybody else was telling me to be. And it was just like, I finally was able to just step into my shoes again and just keep doing what I'm good at, which is coaching you guys and not worrying about just bringing clients in the front end. Yeah. And you were able to just become yourself yes. rather than trying to be a second person. Yes. So it obviously changed dramatically within the business. But did it change anything in your personal life, being able to do that and being able to just be you? Yes, 100%. Because I'm like, I feel like when I was fitness coaching, there was a shift where I was able to just step into my own power and start speaking my truth and like breaking everything down. And that's where Tough Love came into the fucking PT nomination as well, where we traveled and did the fucking business coaching. Um, but when that happened, it was like kind of like a sigh of relief because then it was like, I don't need to try to be B anymore. I could just create what I want to create. And when I sat down and thought about it, I was like, well, I'm not fitness coaching anymore. I'm like, I'm not, like, I'm not business coaching. I'm not putting out content for attracting people who need business coaching. I was like, what do I like talking about? I was like, I love fucking uh, demolishing excuses. I'm like, I like just speaking the fucking truth. And then I started dabbling in like, okay, well, I did like a workout video I really liked that guy's speech. Let me just throw that over my workout video and post it. And it started seeing a little bit of traction, a little bit of traction, a little bit of traction. Um, but it wasn't until Julia bitched me out that everything yeah, fucking slayed. Right? <laughs> yeah. So um, I dabbled with it for a while. A lot of Joe Rogan podcasts blew up. A lot of different audios blew up. Uh, but then there was one time. It's a lot of other people's voices. Oh, yeah. Only other people's voices. I didn't do anything at my point. It was just like different individuals that I could find that I was motivated by that I wanted to regurgitate and share. Um, and then I found a page called Say Less Lifestyles. I don't know if you've ever seen it on TikTok. They got a bunch of that. It's a bunch of other people's voices that they just share, kind of like a motiversity or they're trying to be a motiversity, etc. cetera. Um, and I saw this video and it fucking smacked me in my face. And it was this dude talking. I actually, I wish I remembered his name because we talked a couple times over Instagram. Uh, but this guy was talking about like stop sharing your dreams and your goals with everybody because not everybody deserves that type of access to you. When I heard that, like Julia heard it like 47 times that day. I just listened to it over and over and over again and it inspired um, like blocking out opinions. Like I wanted to do a video about that and I fucking just kept losing my mind. I was looking over Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and I was trying to find other people's voices and I'm like asking Julia and I'm like telling her because she's like, why are you getting so frustrated? I'm like, well, I can't find this fucking video. I like, I want to find somebody to be able to blah, blah, blah. She's like, fucking go say it. Mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? She's like, you're literally telling me what you want to find somebody else to say. Go fucking say it. And I remember her saying that and I was like, oh, okay, fucking sounds good. And then I did it. And the first video got like 10K views. And I was like, what the fuck? And then I was like, well, if I spoke this way, like I know my voice has a little bit of power. So let me just experiment now. And I started downloading mine and Brian's podcasts because I was doing fucking podcasts with them or random podcasts with them. At this point, I didn't have the Wake Up the World podcast or anything. So I started downloading episodes and overlaying the audio. And fucking that one got 10,000 views. Another one got 7,000 views. Another one got 20,000 views. And I was like, oh shit, like people want to fucking hear me. Mm -hmm. And then I just started experimenting with it and experimenting with it and just trying to be who I thought I always needed. Like I was trying to be the voice that I thought people needed to hear. I just started yelling about shit that fucking made me passionate. And then it blew up. Oh yeah. Like insane amount from you wanting to quit your Instagram. Oh yeah. Because you were like, shit is not working for me to like, I don't know even how many you have now, over 100,000 or something? 170 is what I yeah. just on IG. And TikTok's almost a million, is that We just hit 808,000 yeah, on that's TikTok. that's insane. And you were, what was your TikTok at before? Nothing. TikTok wasn't around. Yeah, I'm like, we, we had just started. I think I had like fucking 1,000 followers yeah. or something like that because it was... What ended up happening was um, when I wanted to quit my Instagram, that was legit like the transition of fitness coach to business coach to now. 
like I had no, I had no identity. It was like fitness coaching because you scroll back then, like you'll see me like skipping workout videos and everything like that. Like have fun fucking scrolling, but like yeah, yeah. there's a lot of fitness content, and then it was a mix of business content. Because everybody was trying to make me fucking be and everybody wanted me to make money instantly and everybody's like looking up to me like fucking you should be able to do this. Nothing was hitting um, and I like didn't have any identity and then I made the shift and as soon as I made that shift things just started fucking exploding like all over everything. When you started to be you yes. and speak your voice. That's like the key thing here mm -hmm. that I really want to sink in because we've already talked about it but like not making decisions based off of other people staying in shit just because you don't want to upset your mom yep. or your friends like what do you want to do big question we had this weekend what do you want yes what terrifies me and we've both talked about this is getting to 40 50 60 and being like hmm did i live my life for me or did i live my life for everybody else around me it's a terrifying thought yeah it's a fucking terrifying thought that i feel like is one of the reasons why i've attacked and succeeded so well because like when i started doing videos guys like they're not the fucking regular they're me no. these are the conversations i have with other people i joke around with it the only thing is that i feel like we all have like risque conversations with people and we all joke around to a degree where like we're like eh, i don't know if that should be public the difference is i'm willing to make, take it fucking public i'm willing to say the shit that people aren't like one of my first ever videos blew up and it literally said that started with fuck your mom your dad your brother your sister your cousins or anybody else who fucking doubts you and that's actually a podcast tough love i did for you guys and it was because i kept seeing you guys come into our community and talk about how your mom would doubt you being an online fitness coach. Your dad would shit on your online fitness coaching dreams. Like I saw so many of you complain about how your family didn't believe in you and I fucking snapped and I did a tough love and I downloaded it, posted it and it blew the fuck up because I am driven by being the best version of myself and not worrying about what the fuck anyone has to say. Because this whole like let's get old and then look back at our life, forget shit terrifies me and I refuse to fucking do it. There's no way. Like I, lived, I used to tell myself that I would be dead by the age of 25 because I was just drinking and doing drugs and not doing anything. So I feel like I owe it to my younger self to a certain degree. And on top of that as well, I used to, when, I'm around, when I was around like 23, 24, be like, if I make it to 50, I'll be happy. I'll be fucking happy. So I'm like, I just want to do shit while I'm here. I don't think there's a point in being on this planet and fucking not taking advantage of every single day. I agree. All right. Well, that's something that goes even deeper for you. Um, and something that you talk about in our community. I'm not sure if you've talked about it publicly or like on in, in any TikTok videos, but something that's really important for you that I never understood or could understood until we had a bit of a conversation last weekend where you want to be remembered. Mm -hmm. Like you want to be remembered. And when I first heard that, if I'm being honest, I was like, well, he just hasn't come out of his ego enough because the ego is yeah. what wants to be remembered. Oh, yeah. Like, and I've done a lot of spiritual work. Obviously, I still have an ego. Yeah. But everything that I've learned or been through, when people want to be known or they want to be seen, it's usually a, a track attached to an ego. Yeah. But for you and your explanation... I felt like that ego kind of washed away when you were able to explain it. And I think a lot of people would hear the same thing. Mm. Why do you want to be remembered? Why is that important? Well, number one, because I, I want to touch on that because I think it's funny. I got a fucking massive ego. Yeah. Like, let's be real. I do 100%. And there's a big part of me that says that. I don't want to say big part, but there's a big part of me that says that and has that attitude. Because I fucking do. And I don't care what you fucking think about it. I don't care if that throws you off. A lot of you do nothing with your lives and be forgotten. I want to be remembered forever. And then it tailors into the deeper part of like, because what the fuck is the point of being on this planet for a hundred years to just die and be forgotten? I feel like the world would be such a fucking better place if we all work to be remembered forever. I don't know about you, but when I watch fucking movies about Italy and fucking Rome and the gladiators, that shit fucking amps me up. Like those people did amazing fucking things. They're still remembered today, and I don't even know 
how old that shit is. Mm-hmm. No fucking idea. But, but I'm like, people travel the world to go to Rome to see the Colosseum based off of the fucking history. And I want that level of impact. I want to touch as many fucking lives as possible so I can be remembered forever. And I remember I told you this, and this is something I've, I didn't voice like out there until recently because I didn't really know how it was going to be perceived. But then I started saying it because again, I love Julia. I love our future child. I love all my friends. I love our clients and I would never want to leave. But like, no joke, I've said this publicly multiple times. If I was able to look into my future and understand that I will be forgotten and I will not be remembered forever, if there was no chance of being remembered forever, just kill me now. Because I don't see a fucking point in being here. Like, I want to leave my impact on the world. I feel like that's what we should all be doing. Because again, I feel like the world would be such a fucking better place. We all try to do better, to help people, to impact people, to change fucking lives, to do something that would make us be remembered. I feel like the world would be so much fucking better. I agree. Right? Yeah, I agree. Like you said, imagine if everybody was actually living up to their true potential. (laughs) There wouldn't be half the shit that there is going on in the world. There wouldn't be half... The control that's going on in the world like every there so many more people would be free whether they subconsciously know they're not free or not the world would be a better place and that can sound cheesy as fuck but like it would be fucking insane like guys just think about this for a second okay just think about it if you're fat okay lazy unhappy all right and you look at other people's lives maybe it's a reality show where you see someone on the street and you're like i wish i was like them Think about what it was like if all of you were like them. If everyone was jacked, if everyone was rich, if everyone was at their higher purpose, we would have fucking superhumans walking around. Yeah. Because then, because again, people are jealous. They're yeah, envious. They'd that. be like, how the fuck do I beat that now? We, it, the world would be so much fucking farther than it is now. If we all just wanted to be remembered forever, if we all just wanted to do something that was bigger than what we're fucking doing now. And I even took it farther on the uh, conversation when we were all sitting at the table. Like, guys, again, I'm weird. I think about weird shit when me and Julia are driving around and stuff. I don't fucking like that I can drive down the street and see a thousand people and none of them know who I am. It's fucking weird to me. I'm like, how the hell am I on this planet and I could be sitting next, like literally as close as we are right now, and you don't know me. You have your own life. You have your own problems. You have your own children, mother, fucking father. Like, that's fucking weird. And I don't know. It's weird to me. When I sit down and I actually think about it, I'm like, it, it freaks me out. I'm like, I don't fucking like it. I'm like, I want to be impacting everyone on some fucking level. I get that, but in a different way. For me, it's like, a restaurant's a really easy way because you can be in there. There can be hundreds of people in there that you've never seen in your entire life. Right. And to me, I'm like looking at them and I'm like, there's a conscious brain inside that head right now. Yes. That I'm not. That you're not connected to. That's what I fucking mean. Yes. And, and then I also take it a step further and I'm like, I wonder if that person has positive or negative thoughts. And most of the time it's like, oh, what do I have to do tomorrow? Oh, what was yesterday? I forgot about that. I gotta pick up the kids. Oh shit, I have this bill due. And they should just be sitting at dinner having a good time, right? But it's like, I always, it's funny, like in a different way. Yes. Like obviously we're thinking about it in, in a little bit of a different way, but I'm like, how does that person have a conscious mind and brain and thought if we're all connected, but I can't hear what they're Yo, it's, right I now. fucking feel you on so many levels right now, it's not even fucking funny. Cause that shit, it, it's weird to me and I don't like it. Like I actually don't fucking like it. Like me and Julie be driving around and I'm like, the fact that I'm sitting here like looking at someone else and I'm like, how the fuck do you not know my name yet? And I'm like, and that's a little bit of the ego, but it's also of like the, like it doesn't compute with my brain. Like it, I'm like on that level. Cause I've thought about that before too, where I'm like, this person has their own life, their own thoughts, their own problems, their own things going on. And like on the deeper level, I know that a lot of individuals on this planet are like we've been talking about in this podcast, negative and in a bad headspace where I'm like, yeah, I might be fucking ruthlessly intense with my message and everything I do, but I know if you fucking turn me on once, I'll be in your head forever and I might be able to fucking change you. Yes. I might be able to knock you out of your shit. Yeah. I might be able to fucking change your life in some goddamn level. Even if you hate me, you're never going to be able to forget what the fuck I say and it's going to help you change. I think that speaks to the level 
of disconnect that is in the world right now because it doesn't matter necessarily what what your beliefs are surface level we technically are all connected and i think why it bothers you so much and it bothers me so much is that we feel that disconnect from people yeah. and if we all were a little bit more connected on the same page i don't think it would drive you as crazy because you'd know like okay we're all we're all chilling we're all kind of at peace right now but yeah. that's like not how it is in the world right now yeah, right. everybody can feel the uneasiness like i literally get chills just even saying oh, that yeah. right now there is a big uneasiness in the world and i could talk about this shit for hours and hours and hours but where the disconnect is is everybody is so not conscious right now and one way to really step into your consciousness is focusing on your fucking health yes and being healthy and putting good food in your body and that's like the whole point like we've talked a lot about this for the last however long yeah. and you've been able to become like you said you're like i was 20 i don't even remember i was not conscious at all no. Now you've done how many competitions? I've You're done. healthy, like. Fucking four now. Yeah. Four comps now. And you've leveled up, leveled up. You went from trailer park to living in a mansion with your wife who you're gonna have a baby with in two years. Next to your best friend's mansion, I will say. My yes. neighbor's next door. Yes. Owning a gym. And in my opinion, none of this would have started if you didn't change your life and focus on your health first. Oh no, not at all. Like every, fu I've talked about this before, and I, I've done a, I've done a podcast on this. Who the fuck knows how long ago? I want to do another one. Like fitness changed my life. Fitness, not any fucking knowledge that I got from somebody else. Not an opportunity. Fucking fitness. And I'm gonna get real for a minute. And this is where the tough love comes out to me, and the way like the coach comes out to me. Where Mariah's seen it a lot. You can have success as a fat fuck. Don't get it twisted. There's a lot of people out there. They're not happy. You're just fucking not. I'm sorry. Too fucking bad. Talk shit. Clip this fucking part. Stitch it on TikTok. Do whatever the fuck you want. You ain't happy. When you have to go to the doctor to worry about your health problems, you can't breathe properly. You can't run around with your fucking kids because you're not taking care of your health. You are not fucking happy. It's just facts. It doesn't even make sense to me. I focused on my health and my whole fucking life changed. My whole fucking life changed. And I didn't even realize it. I was just trying to be better. And the reason why I chose fitness is because I couldn't control my fucking wealth. I was broke as fuck in debt because of my addiction. I could not control my relationships because I knew nobody. And I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. And honestly, I was a fucking shithead. I was on every fucking dating app I could fucking be on. I was a piece of shit. I was not a fucking nice guy. So I focused on the only fucking thing that I could control, which was what I put in my fucking mouth and what I do on a daily basis. So did I get a lot of sleep? Nah. Did I hit the gym every fucking day? Yup. After 12 hours of hard labor. Every day. No matter what. I'm like, I just focused on what I could control and I feel like the world is so focused on what they fucking can't. Y'all are still bitching about the vid. Shut the fuck up. Go to the fucking gym. The vid ain't why you're unhealthy. It's because you keep stuffing your fucking face with Twinkies. You fucking, oh my God. Like this is, like this shit gets me more triggered than anything else in this world. Stop worrying about who the fuck we're going to vote in the office next year. Like let's be fucking real. I have no idea why people even hate Trudeau the much, as much as they do. No clue. Yeah. Not even a fucking little bit. People just hate him. And I'm like, oh, okay. Sounds good. And they're like, why do you hate him, Cole? And I'm like, I have no fucking idea, bro. I'm like, I don't know nothing about it. I don't know what the fucking gas prices are. I don't know what the inflation is. I don't know what's going on with the groceries. I don't know what's happening in the government. I have no idea what's happening in the news because I can't control any of that shit. So I just focus on me. But that's also because you took control of your life. So none of those things control your life. Exactly. A lot of these things that's, that are going on right now control people's lives. And yeah, you know, I feel for you. If you can't afford groceries right now, that's pretty fucked. Yeah. But at the same time, you can start to control the type of food you're putting into your body. Eating healthy is not expensive. Oh my God. So that doesn't matter what the, the grocery the grocery price Let's is. Let's break on that for a minute. Let's touch on that for a minute. We're going to dissect this shit because a lot of y'all will say that fast food is cheaper than fucking groceries. And that's because you guys are shopping at Whole Foods and not Walmart. Go to Walmart, buy a 10-pound bag of rice for fucking 20 bucks. 
You're like, well, cool, 20 bucks is more expensive than three fucking meals at a McDonald's today. Yeah, but that fucking bag of rice will last you a month. Maybe two. Yeah. You're Start. In a calorie deficit. Yeah, You're exactly. Deficit. Fucking learn that word, you fuckers. Go to Costco, buy a box of chicken. This is what I did when I was ironworking. Bag of rice, box of chicken. You get fucking, what, 35 breasts or some shit in there? Shit would last me fucking a month. If you're fucking eating correctly, especially if you have other fucking meals, you guys got a budget shop, just like you're budgeting so you can fit all the bullshit in. Mm -hmm. The budget for the movies, the budget for the restaurant, the budget for the alcohol, the budget for the concert, the budget for all these fucking things, but you guys won't budget for your health, and it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. There's gym memberships out there that are like ten dollars a month. People won't pay for them. Say a gym membership is like let's say it's average 50 to sometimes 80 depending on where you are yeah if it's 50 bucks that's like average you're gonna get a pretty good gym that's two meals eating out per week and that's if you get a main and you tip with tax that's not even including if you get one alcoholic drink like yeah. that's the price nowadays that's twice most people are eating eating out twice more than twice a week and that's oh yeah right there. when i was fucking iron working when I was fucking not working on my fitness, I was eating at the gut truck every single day, which, have you ever heard I'm that like, term before? Nasty <laughs> shit. Nasty. Yo, nice. if y'all my construction guys at, like, comment below. Let me know what's going on. Construction ladies, construction guys. Gut truck is a truck that drives around to the job sites. And it's filled with food. A lot of the food has been there for, like, three fucking days. I'm not even joking. We used to have, like, fucking, like, McMuffins and shit that you could fucking bang on the wall. You just microwave it till it's fucking soft and you're good to go. So we needed the gut truck twice a day. Tim Hortons in the fucking morning usually. Subway fucking midday. And then a fucking dinner out. Yeah. Every fucking day. No matter what. No matter what. No matter what. And guess what? I never complained about it. Because that was my normal. You guys end up building these habits and rituals that work against what the fuck you want to achieve. And then when you would like to change your life, you have to go against your normal. So you think it's hard when it's not. No one. All right. Let's keep it fucking real. Unless you are homeless, none of you have hard fucking lives. None of you. We don't live in a third world country, motherfucker. I've been there. When we went to Bali, we rented a villa. Beautiful. You've been to Bali. You know how they live. It's a fucking wooden platform elevated off the ground six feet. I saw a fucking family, mom, dad, four children, and a baby on the fucking platform. It broke my heart. I legit was like, how the fuck do I serve these people? I ended up tipping them like fucking extra $500. What I will say on that, a lot of these people are happy as fuck. Happy as fuck! They will come up to you. They'll give service to you. They're very, very kind. Their kids happy as shit. Yes, running around, getting dirty. Yeah. They're not complaining about shit. No. And they have, what, one-tenth of the size, maybe less of what you have. Oh my God, it's way less. It's a privilege yes. to lose weight. A privilege. It is. Like, get that through your head. It's actually ridiculous to me how people don't understand that if you are gaining weight, if you are gaining fucking weight right now and really listen to this statement because it's going to piss a lot of you guys off if you are gaining fucking weight you have it better than half the fucking world if not more because there's people there's entire families that can't even fucking eat while you are eating enough to feed the entire fucking family because you are eating yourself into obesity mm -hmm. it doesn't even make sense to me let me say something because i know people are gonna be like well, what about my thyroid and what about my health issues? Not fucking speaking to the 1%. No, okay? exactly. Speaking to the majority yes. of you who choose to do that and then create health issues because you ate too much. Exactly. You have those health issues now because of that, because you're stressed out, because you don't drink enough water, because you don't get enough sleep, because you don't work on your mindset. That is why you are where you're at right now. You don't just develop disease no. for no fucking reason. There's your environment. There's what you choose to put in your body. There's the people you choose to hang out with. Yeah. Everything in your life is there because you chose it to be there. And it's the truest, most honest lesson that no one will understand. And then they look at the 1%, the successful individuals in this world. All right, let's take it down. Let's look at the 5%. The people are even just working on themselves. And they see them as weird. 
Yeah. They see them as the negative ones, the rude ones, the people who are attacking the other individuals, the people who are trying to drag everyone else down when all they're doing is bettering their life and doing the shit that you guys can achieve too. That's literally it. It comes down to a fucking choice. And it's as easy as, like you said, what food am I going to buy today? Like, I'm not worried about the problems in the world because I'm just worried on what I need to do. I'm worried on how do I show up as my best self for you guys in our business? How do I show up as my best self as a husband for Julia? How do I show up as the best self as a father when my kid gets here? Like, that's what I'm worried about. I'm not panicking about all this other shit and then throwing myself down this fucking dark spiral like a lot of you guys are currently in. So I know a lot of people are going to listen to this and it's going to go... Oh, yeah. Right over their head. Oh, yeah. And sometimes that's actually what made me not start this podcast for a long time. Because sometimes I'm like, what's the point if you're just preaching to the choir? There's going to be people listening to this that are like, yeah, fuck yeah, tell them. But I want to be impacting the people that are triggered by this podcast. And a lot of people are too triggered where they're not going to change. But I know that there's one person listening right now that they're like, fuck fuck, yeah, that's me. I need to change. But what do I do? How do I step into my power? How do I step into my light? Maybe I didn't have as hard of an upbringing as Cole, or maybe I had an even harder upbringing as Cole. How do I get there? Like, what would you tell them? Focus on the one step. I would focus on the one step, whatever that looks like for you. And this is where, like, what you just said, where, like, the disconnect happens. Mm -hmm. Because people are like, well, if you can't give me the blueprint or if you can't fucking give me exactly what to do, then like I can't fucking change. Like I can't do anything. You need to focus on the one step for you. Let's take fitness. All right. Look at your life right now and ask yourself, what's something that I can do today that will help me look better in the mirror today? All right. You're not going to see actual visual changes for a fucking while. But what I mean by that is I'm a very, very big advocate in utilizing the mirror as your motivation. Like everything comes from you, period. Whether you want to believe it or not, negative emotions, positive emotions, fucking the way that you look in the mirror, the way your bank account looks, the way the relationship you have with your parents, everything comes from fucking you. So what I'm talking about is the one step. I want you to take a step back right now, listen to this fucking podcast, listen to my goddamn words, and then do something that will help you move forward today 1% more. Let's do a walk. All right, you haven't fucking moved your body in months, in weeks. You haven't done anything for your life. Go for a walk today. That's it. It's the smallest fucking thing. There's literally days where I am so busy, I don't leave that computer that's right beside us for like 12 hours. But then Julia's like, babe, let's just go for a walk. Just a little walk. It's a fucking 500 meter walk around the block. I've literally already fucking mapped it. Bam, I'm done in fucking seven minutes. I'm right back to work. But that one little walk helps me get anywhere from 1700 to 2700 steps in i've fucking mapped it again before that adds up through the week you start losing weight on a weekly basis you start feeling better about your skin you start feeling better about your weight you start feeling more confident in social situations you can now sit down at a fucking gathering and not pick your fucking shirt off your gut all the time like it's about the one percent and i feel like too many people see my life now all right they see where i'm at and they're like how do i become that well cole's doing all of this shit every single fucking day. Because guys, I wake up at 3.30 a.m. every day. I then do a cold shower. Affirmations, grateful. Let's drive to the gym. I'm at the gym by 4.45. I do an hour and a half workout. As soon as I'm done that, I do a little bit of content creation. I come back here. I shower, get ready for the day, start two meetings. Then I go into podcasts and then trainings for the day. And then I do extra stuff like I'm doing with you right now. People see that. It's like, oh my fucking God, I can't do that shit. I'm not asking you to do that. Just fucking put the cheeseburger down. Eat a fucking salad today. That's the 1%. Go for a five minute walk. That's it. One decision. That's it. It's, it's, and that's the thing. My favorite quote, and um, I'll never forget this. I actually learned this before I fucking got into any of it, which is kind of a fucking weird coincidence. But the quote is one small step in the right direction could be the biggest step of your life. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's my whole fucking life. That, that quote is my whole life. One step in the right direction. I went on a road trip to Calgary. One step in the right direction. I listened to my brother and I got an ironworking job. One step in the right direction. I threw the pills out, 
because I was sick of looking myself in the mirror and hating my life. One step in the right direction, I looked up how do I lose weight on Google. It's that fucking easy, guys. The information's there. One step in the right direction, I put my ego to the side and I called Brian. One step in the right direction, I listened to everything he fucking said. Like, guys, it's literally one fucking step. All right? I talked about this this morning and yesterday and multiple other times. And it's about trusting your fucking gut. All right? A lot of you guys allow your analytical brain to throw you off the path of what your instincts say. All right? If you're listening to this right now, you probably have wanted to take action in your life for a while. There's been something burning inside you telling you to take action. All right, you see something and you're like, I want that. I want to taste that. I want to buy that. I want to do that. I would like that to be my life. That's your gut. That's your instincts. We are animals. All right, we have animal fucking instincts. A lot of you guys don't listen to it. When we talked about the event, you said, what was your word? Happiness. Happiness. Now, where that came from, and we spoke about it a little bit. You guys might have missed it. It came from us asking them what they want. All right, so I want you to close your eyes for a second. Listen to my voice. All right, tune out the fucking world. Take one deep breath with me. What do you want? Whatever you fucking thought of, that word is your instincts telling you what you want in life. Whether it's money, happiness, success, fulfillment, freedom, whatever. A girlfriend, a boyfriend, it could be that low level. It literally could be five pounds less. It could be a better body. It could be the house, car, anything you thought of. The reason why I'm over explaining this is because a lot of you guys changed your word. A lot of you guys said money and then you're like, actually, I don't like that. I want fulfillment. A lot of you guys said weight loss and then you're like, actually, happiness. Stop fucking turning on your analytical brain and go with your fucking gut. My gut has got me everything. Everything I have today, from the car, from the wife, to the soon-to-be kid, to the business, to the gym, to the relationships, to the friendships, all of it was from my gut. I've just listened. I've just not fucking argued. I've been like, eh. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, this is a little bit scary. And I'm like, oh, well, fucking whatever. My gut says I got to do it. I got to do it anyways. Listen to your gut. That's it. It changes the fucking game across the board. I think that's the perfect time to tie it all up into a neat bow. Like Where can they find you? Where are you at? Well, um, if you guys are a little bit triggered, okay? Yeah, you want to get slapped in the face some more. Um, I've got a podcast, Wake Up With The Wolf podcast. I'm actually going to have Mariah on as a guest as well. It. It's going to be a blast. Um, on top of that, you guys can find me on IG or TikTok at C-O-L-E-L-U-I-S-D-A-S-I-L-V-A -S -S or Cole Lewis De Silva. Content's raw as fuck. All right, even more raw than I went today because I, I, I chilled that out a little bit today. Um, but it's going to be the shit that you guys need to hear in order to really take action on your fucking goals. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for fucking asking me. This is a That's blast. Awesome. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day, and I think people are going to get a lot of value from this. So. I love it, girl. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you.